In this video, I'll be going over a very straightforward concept that could allow you to start saving upwards of $1,000 a month. Let's get into it. My name is Christian, welcome to my channel. My passion is personal finance, and I hope to inspire you to create a path to financial freedom. So the factor that enabled me to start saving $1,000 per month, and something I think just about anyone can do, is pay off and stay out of car debt. And before we go into how I made this happen for myself, let's get into some stats. According to Credit Karma, the average American car payment for a new car is $644 a month, and almost $500 a month for used cars with the average auto loan term being over five and a half years. And most American families have two car loans per household. I wish this wasn't the norm because most average American families are easily spending $1,000 or more on cars monthly. And auto loan debt is the third largest debt category behind mortgages and student loans. And according to CNBC and Bloomberg, over 50% of millennials are living paycheck to paycheck, and 30% of those people are making over $100,000 a year. It's kind of crazy to think that you could be living paycheck to paycheck, making over six figures a year. This is significant because, in my opinion, car payments are a big contributor that put people in this bad financial situation, preventing them from being able to save and invest for their family's future. The average American between the age of 55 and 64 only has a retirement savings amount of $134,000. And for those under the age of 35, the average amount saved for retirement is only $13,000. So this type of debt could lead to that situation where you reach an age you'd like to stop working and retire, but you simply don't have enough money saved to sustain your lifestyle, so you keep working into your 60s and your 70s. I feared that would be my situation, and I was that average American with two auto loans, until I started really understanding the importance of personal finance and the significance of debt. So what motivated me to make the change? But seriously, Dave definitely had something to do with it. Also, I started understanding how compound interest works, and instead of wasting money on a depreciating liability, I should instead invest that money into something that appreciates. Here's an example. Investing $1,000 a month into an asset instead of a liability, for 20 years earning the average stock market return of 8% comes out to almost $600,000. And those are conservative figures, so given a little better return and a little more time, that number could be much higher. Ultimately, I got to a point where I realized if I don't start prioritizing my future over my present, I'll be one of those people working into my 70s. And by paying down my car debt or simply selling a car I didn't need, I could free up around $1,000 a month. So the notion of not investing anything monthly to investing $1,000 a month really got me motivated to take action. At the time I committed to doing this, I had a 2015 Ford Mustang GT and a 2013 Ford Edge Limited. My Mustang payment was $485 a month and the Edge payment was $385 a month, so a little under the national average, but with insurance it was close to $1,000 a month. I knew if I could either sell the cars or get them paid off fast, I could free up that money and start investing. So that's what I did. My Mustang was still basically brand new and I was able to sell it for more than what I owed on it. So I was actually able to profit about $3,000. So the next step was to find a $3,000 car. I ended up buying a 1999 BMW 528i. I always liked that body style and era of BMW and the one that I found was in pretty good shape at the time. So I bought that car for $3,000 cash and I didn't even get full coverage insurance on it. I just got the bare minimum liability because it was a beater and if something happened to it, I really didn't care. I wanted to save as much money as possible. Now onto the Ford Edge. At the time, I only had about a year left of payments on it. So with the freed up money from my Mustang, I just started doubling my monthly payment and got it paid off ahead of schedule. Now here's the thing, after it was paid off, I didn't upgrade or get a newer model. The car is perfectly fine, there's no issues with it, so why would I replace it if I don't have to? This is where a lot of people go wrong, feeling the need to replace that car with the newer, better model, getting a new loan and staying in debt, remaining a slave to the lender, as Dave Ramsey would say. So by not upgrading and having no more car debt, I freed up $1,000 a month. And that money gave me freedom and options, so when or if I ever had any car problems or maintenance required, let's say, I could easily cover those costs without having to dip into my savings. It became much easier financially to take care of any unexpected expenses really, not just car related. Now eventually the BMW did end up having some problems I simply didn't want to deal with, so I sold that car for $2,000. I then took that $2,000, saved a little bit of cash, which was now much easier to do, and I bought a used 2006 Ford F-150 for $10,000 outright. 
No auto loan necessary. And it's just a very basic truck, nothing fancy. It serves its purpose for us. So if you can embrace some frugality, some humility, and understand that going into debt over a depreciating asset really doesn't make much sense, you could easily start saving and investing and get to that $1,000 a month mark, which as we saw in the compound interest scenario could drastically change your family's future. By taking these actions and accepting I didn't have to have nice new cars, it inspired me to go further. I started to look at other areas within my lifestyle that I could cut back on so I could invest even more. And now I'm investing upwards of $3,000 a month. This turned out to be the catalyst that enabled me to create my path to financial freedom. I say that in all my videos and the spirit behind that concept is have a mission, have a goal, map it out, have a number in mind you want in retirement and commit to achieving that financial objective. And if you're interested in what I'm investing in to reach my financial objective, I'll link a video in the outro on the top three stocks I'm buying this year. So comment down below, what's your goal? What's your idea of financial freedom? I'd love to get some feedback from y'all in the comments. Thank you for watching. If you got value from this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video with someone you think could get value from it as well. I'll see you guys in the next one.